Hello everyone and welcome to the Property Podcast. It's episode 243. I'm Rob B, of course, with Rob D. And this week, we're going deep, really deep, with research. Yeah, we certainly are. Get your notepads at the ready, or Evernote, if that's the way you roll, that's fine too. We are going to be getting into a lot of detail. This is an episode that's going to give you a lot of confidence when you're buying and you're doing your research. It gives you a checklist to go through. It also could save you a lot of money. We'll have some horror stories later and we'll tell you how you can avoid them. We certainly will. But before we do, we just a quick thank you to everybody who attended the meetups and most of all the meetup leaders. Rob, you bought yourself a train ticket and headed up to Birmingham. How was it? It was great, thanks. Really good meetup in Birmingham. Lots of super friendly people there. Very enthusiastic about property, of course. People investing in different areas of Birmingham, but also further afield as well. It's one of those meetups that pulls people in from across the whole of the West Midlands. And so I learned lots about investing in the Midlands in general, which is an area that I'm a little bit weak on. So I really enjoyed spending time with the good people there. And Rob, you were not a million miles away because you were in Cheltenham. I was in Cheltenham, beautiful part of the world. Took advantage of that the next day, went for a lovely breakfast. But before I had that lovely breakfast, I went to a lovely meetup full of lovely people. And yes, not just saying this to be nice, Rob, because it was also full of lots of lots of nice people. Really had a nice time. Super, super meetup there. Joanna's doing a great job with that meetup. Awesome crowd. Really relaxed vibe, but it was busy. It was, somehow managed to have decent numbers there, but still keep it relaxed. So that's quite a feat in itself. But yeah, wonderful meetup. If you are in the Cheltenham area or the Birmingham area, or in fact, pretty much any area, because we cover so far and wide now, go to the propertyhub.net forward slash meetups and you can get your free ticket to the next one, which should be easy to remember when it is because they're the first Thursday of every month. So make sure you get to one before the year ends. Maybe set yourself a little goal. Well, something else that happens every month is that the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee meets. Sounds thrilling, doesn't it? But the reason that you should care is that that's when they decide whether or not to put up interest rates. For the last 10 years, they have not decided to put up interest rates. Things have changed, Rob. They have changed. Not too dramatically, but they have changed. And I suppose any change in itself is dramatic after it being so long. So yes, Mark Carney and crew raised the base rate from 0.25% to 0.5%. So what does that mean for you as a property investor? And just in day-to-day life, well, we've got a great link for you in the show notes this week, which is the BBC website, which looks at mortgages, as you would expect, but also looks at different aspects of life to see how you may or may not be affected. Now, While it grabs a lot of headlines, quarter percent in itself isn't that significant. But the symbolism of that move, being brave enough to raise interest rates for the first time, I think is significant. And make sure you listen out at the end of this episode where we tell you about what's coming up next week, because we'll definitely be discussing interest rates in a lot more detail. All right, let's get into our main topic then, the due diligence we do on developments, or more specifically, the RMP does on developments. Rob, you're going to be taking the lead in this episode talking about the RMP process, a process that I know you've been working on for a long time. Much like any investor would do or should do, you do something, it doesn't go perfectly because things don't. You adjust your systems, you improve, you put in a check to stop that thing from happening next time, and you get better. The difference compared to most investors is you've been doing it for a long time and you've been doing it at scale. So you've seen a lot. You've put lots of checks in place. There's a lot for us to run through. I'm sure people are going to be wanting to scribble notes frantically as we go along. So let's try and take this through, starting with the, the high level checks, the checks that everyone should be making, and then drilling down into more detail from there. So where shall we get started? Okay, so deposit protection, let's go there first, because this is a biggie. If you're going to be buying off plan, or you're putting a deposit down first, and you're not completing straight away, so there's a delay between exchange and completion for whatever reason, then you're going to have to make sure you've got deposit protection. So that's one of the first things we'll look at on any deal. Now, lots of people will say that deposit protection is in place, and here it is. But I've seen it in the past, and we've talked about it in different places where you see how it's structured, and really it's not worth the paper it was written on. So you've got to make sure you have a good solicitor or you know yourself. So a simple way to check that, if you're not a solicitor, is to use one and get them to really dig deep. Now, if they're not used to this type of transaction, you may want to consider using a different type of solicitor so they can make sure you're covered. There's lots of different ways of having your deposit protected properly. They could be in a stakeholder account, which just means it's held in a bank account. 
It could be your warranty provider offers protection. For example, at NHBC, cover 10% as part of their policy. There's lots of different ways of going about this. But what's most important is just making sure you do it, check it, because I hear horror story after horror story of people losing deposits because the developer went bust or worse still, they were been pretty much crooks. So pleased to say of all the lessons of all the pain, never ever lost anyone's deposit, probably because we put this high right up at the top of the list to make sure we check and double check and triple check. But that's a really important one if you're looking at any new build or any property, as I say, with a bit of a delay between exchange and completion where you're expected to put a bit of a deposit down. Okay, so you want your deposit to be protected. What's a reasonable level of deposit to put down? Because I think people are often used to exchanging with a 10% deposit. With new builds, it can be more. Is that fair enough? It can be. We, we max it out to 25%. Obviously, developers will frequently try for more, but you don't want to do more than 25% because if you're getting a mortgage, then 75% down, 25% deposit. If you've put 30%, 40% down, then in reality, what you're actually doing is probably paying for the developer to fund their build. Now, I've often seen it where you have stage payments for the entire build, and then you've bought it out cash. Now, these developers will say, oh, but at this point, you can refinance But I've seen it time and time again where people have actually struggled then to get finance because the whole development was done on stage payments and therefore the whole development was bought by investors and therefore mortgageability was a bit of a challenge. So again, just something else to be aware of. If you see those stage payment deals, I'm not saying don't do it, but be very cautious. Okay, so if you're putting down any kind of deposit at all for something that hasn't been built yet or at least hasn't been finished yet you want to be sure that it is going to get finished to a high standard how can you get comfortable that that is going to be the case okay so really simple one it's just looking at the track record of the developer if it's a national developer one of the big ones that you've probably heard of the likes of red row or what have you then you you know their reputation it's easy to find they're well established they've been running for years but in city centers the major developers don't tend to operate they like their help to buy model on the outskirts of city centers and towns so they're not really developing there. So you need to do a bit more research on who is this developer? You know, have they got a good track record? What have they done before? Or is this their first time at the rodeo? Make sure you know. It's so important. It sounds like a basic one, but one that people often miss. Another basic one, Rob, is discount level. Um, you want some sort of deal if you're going off plan. At the very least, you don't want to make sure you're not paying over the odds because you can do. You can go the other way as well. Just because it's off plan doesn't guarantee you a deal. So make sure the discount level's there. It's present in some form. At this point, as you said, Rob, it's just high-level checks, but just at a quick glance, making sure that discount level's there. Okay, and a final thing to check, because you do still see them and probably will want to stay clear of them, is leasehold houses. Yeah, really simple one. Leasehold houses, they're still around. They probably won't be for much longer. What are they? They are houses with leaseholds on. So you're probably scratching your head if you've not come across this before. Yes, most apartments are leasehold, but developers, as an extra way of making some money, started to create houses that were leasehold. And that allowed them to sell the lease and make even more revenue. Been a big crackdown from the government on this, big crackdown from the council of mortgage lenders on this. So you don't see it that often anymore. But if you do, you want to avoid it. So leasehold houses, just another simple check. Make sure it's done and you'll be fine. Okay, so that's the real basics. That's the stuff that you need to be doing to make sure that you're not going to have a really bad experience. You're not going to buy something that isn't going to get finished or isn't going to get done to a high standard. The developer isn't going to do a runner and you're not massively overpaying. When we go to meetups, we generally hear someone say something like, oh, I'm just getting back into property. I had a bad experience. Roundabout maybe the last boom, lost my deposit. and I'm just getting the confidence to go back in again. It happens so often, and those checks will prevent that from happening to you in future. That's to make sure you're not going to have a terrible experience. But how do you make sure that you have a good experience? Now we need to start really digging in. And a good place to start with that is the thing that we really care about. It's the return that we're getting on our investment or the cash flow we're going to get. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start there. Let's do a cash flow, work out our numbers. And what's the ROI? What's the the return? At the very least, you want to be checking that your return's good enough to meet the new rental stress tests that are around now with mortgages probably do a podcast on that or talk more about that in the upcoming weeks so don't worry if you don't understand what that is now but then beyond that you want to make sure your return's nice and healthy and that if interest rates do move up which we've seen can happen that you're covered so make sure you do your cash flow fairly early on in your process another thing rob to check is just the general fundamentals can't believe it's taking that long for us to say it but the fundamentals of the area so is it an area of high employment investment all the good stuff we talk about on the podcast believe it or not we look for in real life so you've got to make sure the fundamentals are there 
So along with the cash flow, we talked about the discount before, Rob. The other thing, just to point out as well, which you probably do a little bit more deeper research now, is we said make sure you get a discount. Well, if you are being told there's a discount or it's below market value, then at this stage, we'd be digging into that as well to make sure it is genuine. So looking at the comparables, again, we've done courses on this and we've done podcasts on this. So please use the podcast page. We've got a funky search bar to search things like below market value and we can teach you more there. But it's just making sure now that, okay, they say it's true. Now let's dig in and see for ourselves. Okay, so that's digging deeper into the numbers. The next thing to dig deeper into is the developer. So we've already talked about the basic checks that you can do on a developer. But Rob, what else can you do? Okay, so once you've done the basic, basic checks, if you get this stage of a research project, then you want to be getting really deep. So you want to be checking the developers' past developments if you've not heard of them before. So possibly going even to visit them. At the very least, doing desktop research or desktop research doing it from home. But even better, going to visit them if you're still not confident. Another thing to do is company's house review of the developer, the associated contractors. Is there anybody on there who you're a bit worried about? You can also do credit checks at this point on the developer if you still lack confidence. So there's a lot you can be doing at this point. Really, the only person that can limit the, the depth you go here is yourself. There's so much you can do. But doing some of it, if you've not heard of the developer before, is highly advisable. Okay, so that's the real tough stuff. Digging into the numbers, digging into the developer. Then there's just some other bits and bobs that you want to be looking out for. Yeah, some simple stuff like looking at the floor plans, making sure they're the standard layouts. There's nothing funny or worrying looking there. You know what a normal house or apartment should look like. So quick floor plan check will cover you there. Um, checking the exchange date. Is it 28 days? Is it longer? Can you ask for longer? So just checking that out. And the completion date, if it is off plan, or even if you're buying it with, as I said earlier, with a delay between exchange and completion, getting that ironed out. If it is off plan, you may want to put a long stop date in there as well. A long stop date just means that if they go beyond this secondary date, that you get your deposit back. So let's say your completion date for an off plan development was January next year. You may have a long stop date for July next year. So they can run six months over, but if they go to that point, you have the option to pull out. You don't have to, you just have the option. And then, of course, just simple stuff like the total number of units on a development. How big is it? Now, if it's 400 units in the centre of Manchester or London, that's fine. But if it's 400 units in Bolton, that's probably not fine. And the demand might not be there. The other thing is the amount of investors going into development as well. You want to be checking that out at this stage, link to that. So, again, lots more info. It's going to take time, but all these checks will be worth it, I promise you. Okay, Rob, so loads of bits and bobs there, but there's more. There is, and we've got some heavy stuff coming up. We're going to get into the legals. So let's have a bit of fun first, get away from the desktop stuff and actually get out to the site and have a look at what we're going to be buying. Exactly. So at this point, you've done this all from the comfort of your home or office. You've been able to wear your comfy slippers, or in the office, at least you may have been able to slip your shoes off. But now, get your shoes and coat on, we're off to site. Yes, looking at the development itself, if it's not built yet... Just looking at the site in general, the surrounding area is just as important as the site. Getting to know the area. You know, Google Street View does a wonderful job of helping you understand an area. But a quick walk around the area is an absolute must when you go to visit the site. And yes, you're just looking out for anything obvious, really. I mean, in the past, I've seen tyre warehouses built next door to a development with tyres piled up high, which wouldn't look so good. So you've just got to make sure that the surrounding area, there's nothing obvious there. There's no really, really dodgy areas on its doorstep. It's just making sure that it's a neat, tidy area. The site's a good site if it's not built yet. It may be a development that has started to build, so you can go and visit some of the units already that are complete. If it's on a prior phase, there may be a show cabin. Really, it's just making sure that everything you've seen on desktop stands up when you visit in real life so at this point we do a site visit okay well if you like what you saw and you're enthusiastic about it hopefully that'll give you the motivation to get through the deepest level of research that's coming up this is the stuff that seems like it's right down in the weeds but it's so important you see so many issues arising from the legals and all these little bits and pieces that people very frequently don't check. They maybe think that their solicitor is going to be checking them. If they're not a specialist, they don't know what they should be checking. So very important not to get over enthusiastic about what you've seen and just sign. You want to really get in there starting with a review of a very important document, the lease. Yeah, the lease. It's a big one. And Rob, linked to this, you said solicitors, so maybe we'll touch that on that as well. Is that the solicitors that you use, try and use a specialist. So 
we are put off when a developer says, oh, you, you want you to use this solicitor because that does make us nervous. We want to, at this point, make sure that one of our panel of solicitors who we know are used to working on these transactions are available and are able to work on this and are happy with things like the lease. And the lease is looking at it to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to harm your sale or mortgageability of that property in the future. Again, there's loads on this subject and we're just scratching the surface today of all the things that you can do. But what I can say is just make sure your lease is checked over by a solicitor who knows what they're doing. Because if they get it wrong, it could affect mortgageability in the future. Or even worse, the saleability of your property itself. So make sure you check that. Another thing to check out is the service charges info. So how much are they? That's important. But who's going to be doing it is probably even more important. Like, have they got a good reputation? Can you go and see blocks that they look after already? A good management company in a block can make the difference between it being a fantastic development to being blooming awful. So make sure you check that out. And another thing to just take note of, already mentioned NHBC before, but make sure that the developer has some sort of warranty in place. There are different warranties that you can get. They normally cover you for 10 years of the development. There's NHBC, there's Premier, there's CRL. Don't worry if you've not heard of these companies. What you want to see is one of them in place so that they will protect your interests if you do buy new builds, that they will cover you for 10 years and you have that warranty in place. Just another layer of protection that you want to make sure is set up. Okay, the end is in sight now. We've got through the legals. That was the real tough stuff. Now there's just a few final bits to check over. It shouldn't fall over at this point, but these are just a few final things that you want to note. Absolutely, just a few last bits, but... Check appliances. If you are getting any, what you are getting. Don't assume that if you see it in a show house that you'll be getting it as well. So check out that list. Again, parking. You may see parking bays outside. Doesn't mean it's included. So check that the parking information is clear. Do you own a parking space? Is it communal parking? Or do you not have a parking space whatsoever? It's possible. You may have to pay extra for it. And talking of extra, look out for those sneaky little extra charges that some of these companies try and put in. So you have your normal service charges, but then sometimes they'll try and bolt other bits and pieces on. It's rare, but it's just worth checking. It's just, again, just going into that level of research, understanding in your sales agreement, what are you signing up for? What you see in a showroom, home, apartments, whatever it may be, is not what will be reflected in the property you end up picking the keys up for. They dress them up to the max and put every nice add-on there is into those properties. Your spec might be a lot more basic, so just check that out. Whew! Tell you what, Rob, <laughs> that was just scratching the surface. I'm pooped, and I've probably got to do. We've probably got to do this several times this week. <laughs> yeah, we can see where you earn your money. There's just so much to know, and I'm so glad that we got to go through it today because this isn't the kind of thing where you can just go online and find a list somewhere. It's not common knowledge. It's definitely not common sense. Well, some of it is, but there's a lot of things that you just wouldn't have thought of unless you've been through it, perhaps had a bad experience, and then corrected as a result. So it's not the kind of information you just find lying around. It's not the kind of information that most companies who are selling this stuff would want to tell you because no development is perfect. There's always going to be something on this list that isn't exactly as you'd want it to be. So they're probably not going to hurry to point those things out to you. But now you've got this list, you can make use of it and it should give you confidence. I hear from so many people who are looking at buying off plan. They think it looks really good. They maybe like send me a link to the brochure or something and say, what do you think? But they don't really have the confidence to, to dig in and assess it and know if it's going to be any good or not there could be five different developments going up they the numbers look good on all of them they all say something about guaranteed rent how do you know which ones of those if any make sense well this is how you know there's so much research you can do and for most of it you don't need any special resources or connections or anything else you just need a bit of time and this list that we've given you today what else is coming today well we've got a resource of the week which rob's very pleased about and we will let you know what's coming up next week got a really good episode really good one for you next week so make sure you listen out for that but before we do let's acknowledge a couple of outstanding people who've left us a review so first up jk yorkie and jk says an outstanding treasure chest of info not just on property but business wealth creation and working life started listening while researching my own house buy 18 months ago and was blown away with all the info rob and rob provide free of charge i've listened to every episode many times read 100 property investment tips and many other related podcasts i couldn't recommend this podcast highly enough for anyone interested in property thank you guys and keep it up well thank you jk and This person's name is Great Works Every Time, says, I've signed up for several podcasts over the last few months, and this one sticks out well and truly above the rest. It's refreshing to hear a quality of pair of 
active property investors share real insight, useful knowledge. I'd love to get you a drink at the next Property Hub meetup. Cheers, guys. Well, I see you're offered us a drink, but you didn't leave your real name. Very good tactic. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, sounds generous, but we've got no way of following up on it. But that's okay. We will give you a resource of the week as a thank you anyway. And Rob, it's an interactive map. Hey! Love these. Thank you to Paul for sending this one in. He knows what we like. This is from the BBC. We'll be linking to it in the show notes. It's an interactive map of house prices. Um, The interesting thing is this is all inflation-adjusted house prices over the last 10 years. So the thing that the article is saying is that in 58% of the UK residential properties are selling for less than they were in 2007 in real terms so after you take inflation into account that's the kind of thing that's interesting in itself but what's really interesting is when you get into the map and you actually see where prices are higher than they were a decade ago and where they were lower it won't come as a massive shock to you that the southeast they're generally higher and in most of the rest of the country it's lower it's just so striking when you see it but you can actually go into each little area and see where prices are now compared to where they were in 2007. So we love this kind of stuff. It's entertaining, but it's useful too. It is. Thank you, Paul. And hopefully you'll also find useful is next week's podcast. Next week, Rob, it's not very often we bring special guests in, but next week we're making a, an exception because he knows a lot and this is going to be a very popular topic. Yep. Next week we are joined by mortgage broker Dave Cookson for a mortgage market update. It's the perfect timing for it with the base rate having just gone up. And it's the kind of topic that you really need an expert for. We like to think that we know a fair bit around this kind of thing. But when you listen to Dave talk, the amount of knowledge that he's got about all the different lenders and their preferences and their terms is unbelievable. So it's going to be an absolute must listen next week. It certainly is. And of course, we'll be back with Ask Rob and Rob on Tuesday. So don't miss that one. But until then, everyone, have fun. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to The Property Podcast. For show notes, all our past episodes, and to leave a review, go to thepropertyhub.net slash podcast. 